Hello friends, today we're doing part three of our budget and we're going to talk about organization of our budget and changing our minds. So first let's start with the way we think. You know, if you limit your spending, you're going to feel like, you know, you're on a diet, you just got to work really hard and this is going to be terrible. This is not going to be hard and it's not going to be terrible. We're going to baby step our way to financial freedom. So it's also not going to happen overnight, but it does require something that changes up here that says, you know what, this is going to give me financial freedom. Just like getting clutter out of my house gives me the freedom to fly to be finally loving myself and have peace in my home, that we're gonna have peace in your finances. And to start that, you have to change your mind. So we're gonna stop living from paycheck to paycheck. We're gonna stop running up our credit cards. We're gonna stop overspending on the holidays. We're gonna stop not having vacations. We're gonna start enjoying our life by limiting our spending, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Take all those amounts of money that you've written down that you've thought about, and these are truly everything you spend. Don't forget if you give charitable spending, don't forget clothes, don't forget medical expenses, um, dues, things like that, fees. Get them all together and then separate them into, do you have any that are weekly? Do you have any that are just monthly? Do you have some that are quarterly, maybe some that are twice a year and some that are annually? Well, then we're going to have to do a little simple math to figure out how much every month you need to set aside. So let's start with something you pay every week. Although rare, it does still happen that some people have weekly, sp weekly bills. So if you have a weekly bill or two, then you want to multiply that one week bill, if you're paying it every single week, by 52. That's how many months, I mean weeks, are in a year. So multiply times 52 and then divide by 12. That's how many months are in the year. Now, that means that if in reality, you're going to be spending um, or paying that bill four times a month, except for a couple of months in the year. But when you do the multiply times 52 and divide by 12, it's gonna give you a little bit over four and it's gonna give you a pretty precise amount that you'll be actually paying that particular company in a 12 month period. So if you can save that much every, out of your out of your paycheck, you know, take that much amount out. That should be enough to pay that bill every week. Okay, hope that wasn't confusing because we're going to go now to monthly. Monthlies just go in a list, and then when you get to um, anything that's different, like quarterly, that means you pay it every three months. Then you're going to divide that by three to figure out how much it is a month. Now, if you've got something due next month and it's something that you pay every three months then you don't have three months to gather it together. So in this case, we're gonna do two months, this month and next month. So if it's a $300 quarterly bill and you had three months, you could put aside $100 a month so you'd have 300 when the bill is due. But in this case, you're gonna to have to save 150 this month and pull out 150 next month to pay the $300 bill. So it's not high math, it's just a little simple math. Just stop and relax, take a breath if this is confusing. You can do this. You can, you've got this. All right, if you have something that you pay twice a year, that's once every six months, the same principle follows. Take the amount, divide it by six. That's how much every month you need to set aside in order to pay that every six months. But if it's due in three months and it's a $500 bill, then you would have six months to save up $500 if it was due in six months. But if it's due in three months, you only have three months to save up 500. So you're gonna take 500 divided by three and that's how much you're gonna put, pull out of your checking, your um, spend, your income that you get every month. You're gonna set that much aside so you have the money to pay the biannual or the twice a year bill. Then if you have something that's due every 12 months, the same thing, divide by 12, that's how, how much it is normally a month. But if you don't have a whole 12 months left, how many months do you have left? Divide that number of months, including the month it's due, into that total amount, and then you'll know how much you need to set aside for now. Once you hit the, the mark and you paid that bill, then you can refigure and say, okay, now I have six months or 12 months or three months to pay this bill in the future. And from then on, that amount will stay the same until that, that bill goes away, okay? So we're gonna do our, our bills into two groups. Besides doing that, we're gonna take everything we have and we're gonna put the ones that are that are um, 
that are fixed or stable, that the amount never changes. For example, your mortgage or your rent stays the same for at least a year. Um, your, I don't know, your, think of something else, your insurance bills, a loan, those will stay the same. So those are called fixed and you can't finagle those. And then we have flexible. Those are things like your utilities, you know, the water bill or the light bill, they'll go up and down. Um, your groceries, your gas, things that you can control. So one thing you can, well, I'll get there in a minute, but those are your flexible items. So you're gonna have to take a good average to figure out how much you need to put aside every month to cover those. I know with our electric bill, we're able to get them to average it for us and we pay the same amount all year long and then they just readjust it the next year. And so for us, we can depend on a flat fee every month for for our cable bill. But it's not always that way and you can't do it that way for gas or groceries because you get those when you need them and you're in control. One good thing about gas and groceries is that you can control how often you make trips in your car. If you're an at-home fly baby and you um, run around all the time, you can stop that and just do errands on your errand day and save gas. So that'll help you with money there. And making a grocery list and a menu, uh, a grocery list based on a menu and, and also shopping your shelves first will save you money on your groceries. So that's some money right there that you're going to be saving. All right, so planning day and errand day work right into this. So put all those bills together and then add them up, the monthly totals that you come up with, add all those up. Now take the income that you get in your household, that would be after tax income or take home income. If you or your spouse are self-employed, you have to take your taxes out before you pay yourself what you can spend, okay? And your expenses, so it's, it's how much you actually can spend. Um, and then add those amounts up if it's more than one income source. Subtract your monthly bills and what's left is your discretionary income. That just means your leftover money that you can do things with other than pay bills. And I'm going to recommend that um, we do some savings with that. So we're going to talk about your discretionary income and savings in our next video. But this video is about your budget. So. That is a budget, very simply, that is a budget. And when you have that budget and you live by that every month, it's not gonna be limiting, it's gonna be freeing. And you're gonna have some things, we'll talk about paying off credit cards and, and loans um, in, our next, in our next video. But for now, we're just gonna work on, this is how much we have to work with every month. This is how much we have to work with. And you may be surprised, it may be more than you think because if you're not saving for those things that come up at different times, like maybe you pay a quarterly fee for your child's Boy Scout troop, you know, and if you're not thinking about that, that's why you're always running short and you, you know, have beans for dinner for three weeks because you had to scrump out of the, out of the grocery money. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna create our budget. Now listen, you're gonna see things that say, certain percent should be your mortgage and a certain percent should be your car payment. Well, you know what? That's not your reality. And those are averages that people do, do who study general populations, but we're not gonna worry about that because this is your reality. This is what you have to live with now. We can change this in the future, but for now, this is what we're living with. So add those up, subtract it from your income. Don't spend what's left over, stick to your budget. Remember, it's just like working in your routines in your house. It's gonna save you money. It's gonna give you a peaceful life. So that's all today for creating a budget. And next time I'm gonna to talk to you about savings. And um, actually, I'm just gonna talk about savings next time. I'll make another one on using credit. Okay, I hope that's good for you today. I think you're awesome. I know you can do this. I know you can. If you have any questions, please, you know, give me a, a, a little question in the, in the comments below and I'll be happy to address those. Thanks so much and remember, you are beautiful.